What's up guys, welcome back to the lab. I'm Chris Chamberlain and I'm gonna be taking you guys through a workout with your Propulse Speed Trainers and we're also gonna be using dumbbells. Before we get to it, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Let's get to work. We're gonna start out with a warm up today. We're gonna to be running through this for one set of each of these exercises. We're gonna be going for about 45 seconds of work with 15 second breaks. You are gonna, um, gonna wanna have some sort of elevated surface like a bench or a, like a plyo box. You could use your stairs at home or your couch if you're working out at home. You're gonna wanna have your Propulse Speed Trainers on you. And then we're gonna wanna have a, a pair of dumbbells. So I have a couple, if you're, if you're fortunate enough to have some heavies and some lights, go ahead and grab a light pair as well as a heavy pair as you might wanna mix and match that through the workout today. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my clock started. We're gonna kick off our shoes and we're actually gonna start with a little bit of fascial work. So this clock's got a little 10 second countdown. Uh, what we're going to start out with while we're standing here, we're actually going to take our uh, Propulse Speed Trainer, just a single one. We're going to park it on the ground. And guys, we're just going to spend about 45 seconds just rolling out the feet a little bit. We're going to have a lot of like plyometric type exercises today, uh, jumping on single legs that we're just going to want these feet nice and loose, feeling good. You can put as much pressure as you need to as you're doing this, but just spend the full duration of this 45 seconds just on the single foot. I will mention like if you're noticing some spots that are a little more sensitive than others, if you wanna pause over them and bear some weight onto that a little bit, that can really uh, kind of get up into that tissue for you and just do things that feel nice. It's sort of your experience on that. This is uh, gonna get us prepped for a little more of aggressive version of this here in a second. Cool, we'll take 15 seconds, you can chill if you want, if you would like to keep rolling that. I don't mind if we roll into these rest periods for uh, some of these warm up drills. So I'm gonna spend a little more time in there. All right, and then we're gonna switch up to the other side. Again, I, if you had to, maybe think about five to 10 full passes with some pressure over the entirety of the foot. You can sort of gauge maybe some problem areas for yourself at that point. And then you can put a little more attention on those problem spots. <clears throat> uh, common action we like to do while we're doing this, if you're thinking about toe extension, so lifting the toes up as you roll out the base of the foot, that can be really helpful, uh, getting that tissue at length while you're working with it. Oh, and if your feet are super sensitive, you could also uh, take a seat and be practicing this at the same time while you're sitting. And again, like I said, we're in that rest period now, but I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a little more attention. This is not something that I really need to rest from. <clears throat> All right, second thing we're gonna do here, we're gonna grab our lighter dumbbell. This one can be pretty intense for some of you. Some of you actually may wanna take that uh, pulser and just use that for this, but we're gonna get down into a kneeling position. You could do this on an elevated surface on the uh, bench as well, but we're gonna place that dumbbell handle right on the calf here. I'm gonna recommend you sort of start up on that meaty part of the calf when you do this. Uh, and we're just gonna roll over it with the dumbbell handle. All right, as we get closer to that like Achilles, you may find putting like a towel underneath of there, under the shin can be helpful. Uh, but it's gonna get more and more sensitive the further we go down. So really take your time and determine how far you wanna go for yourself here. And just like with that uh, rolling of the foot, if you're finding there's a portion that's really sensitive compared to the other, you can just sort of leave it on top of that. All right, so we'll switch to the other side. That one's pretty aggressive, so we are gonna, uh, and the setup can be a little longer, so we will use that rest period for that transition. So again, start up on the meat of that calf. You'll notice like I have it up on its side like that and I lay it onto the tissue. That's gonna give me a little more control over it. And then I'm gonna keep my hands on those uh, hexagons or the hex heads on the side just so I can really uh, play around with how much weight is actually bearing down into that tissue. And again, it gets super sensitive the closer you get down to that ankle and that Achilles. So uh, if you wanna drop one side of the uh, weight onto the ground, that can help alleviate some of that weight and that pressure. But we're, we're chasing that feel good type of um, discomfort, if you will. And this one's a little tighter for me, so I'm gonna go into that rest period just a little bit. Don't be shy on taking that extra bit of work if you want it. 
Ooh, all right, so we're ditch that. We're gonna set up for the next thing here. Uh, we're gonna find the elevated surface we had. We're gonna go ahead and place one foot on top of it, uh, sort of in this Bulgarian split stance, as many call it. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna shift our weight forward for this. We're gonna reach both hands up, and then we're gonna lean off to our right side here. This is gonna create some length off to this back leg side or the elevated side. I'm thinking about pushing that heel out, and we're just gonna sort of hold this passive stretch here uh, for the duration of that 45 seconds. If you've worked with us before and you're getting a little more familiar with these type of positions, if you wanna start drawing in and maybe even contracting down into this lower side body here, you're more than welcome to kind of get after that. But if you're new with us, let's just kind of keep it nice and easy and work on that length on the backside. And the higher the elevation of the back, the deeper the stretch you're probably gonna get uh, in that back hip and this quad and that hip flexor. So we're getting into it. Other side, hands start up. I want you really to commit to that full weight shift forward. Note how this heel's sort of flicking out as I do that. And then I'm just gonna draw this elbow down or both these hands down, uh, creating this nice spread in my elbows. It's a posture that we call coiling here at WEC Method, where we're really emphasizing this side bend, which creates this beautiful stretch on this long side. Again, the higher that box, the more it's gonna kinda like pull into that hip flexor. And if you're comfortable, you've been working with us and you wanna really drill in and feel that contraction on that left side body, go for it. All right, cool, we'll take that breather. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna move into, put my shoes out of the way here, we're gonna grab our pulsers, we're gonna get to our feet now, we're gonna get moving a little more, get the blood flowing. Um, we're gonna start getting our feet and our whole body sort of integrated, feeling a little springier. So we're gonna do bunny hops. We're gonna start in place and I'll try to show a traveling variant. So this little underhand circle with the arms and the pulser. Legs can stay fairly straight. And we're just trying to pulse and react with the ground. Oop, lost my mic there, guys. There you go. So we're trying to pulse and react with the ground very quickly. If you have room where you're working out, you can add a little traveling component to this, a little bunny hop across the room. Or we can be doing this stationary. This is just going to warm up our pulse. So getting used to the tool, but it's also starting to work on that rhythm and timing, connecting our feet to our hands. Perfect. Uh, lastly, last little drill here, we're gonna do a little bit of a flutter pulse. We're gonna probably be doing this for work later in the workout, uh, but I do like getting that core nice and toasty before uh, we get to business. So we're gonna lay on our back. Pulsers, we call this hamburger hands. You sort of hold the pulsers as a unit. We're gonna cock the wrist, start a little rock pulse here. If you're feeling cozy in that hollow position, just start adding like that traditional flutter kick. See a lot of swimmers doing. We're just coordinating the leg up with the side the pulses are up on. So the elbows up, legs up. If this is real challenging for that 45 seconds, you can drop it down, kind of just crunch up slightly. Mm, don't have to go super hard on that first set. Guys, you should be plenty warm. If you wanted to run another set of it, go for it. But we're gonna get right to action. Uh, the action. All right, guys, let's get into this first block. We got two exercises we're gonna be working on. We're gonna be doing a Bulgarian split jump as well as a Bulgarian split squat. So we're gonna be utilizing that elevated surface, that bench, the staircase, uh, bed, couch, whatever you got with you. We're gonna be using the football speed trainers as well as one of our lighter dumbbells. We're gonna take uh, an interesting little approach to this. We're gonna do a little ladder down. We're gonna do about eight reps on each side of each of these, then six, then four, then two. We're gonna work on trying to get more and more explosive with the Bulgarian split jumps that we're doing with the propulsors as we work down that ladder. So let's go ahead and get to business. We're not doing the clock for this one. Uh, we'll have a little on-screen countdown with you though. Starting the Bulgarian split squat position. We're already familiar with this. We did it in the warm up. Again, we're gonna go for eight nice and easy, smooth, crisp reps here. We're gonna start up, drive into position, explode out. Two, three, 
For this whole thing, we're looking to keep the weight over the front foot and stay in that coil on the left. I believe that was eight. We'll go ahead and switch to the other side. Eight reps, right legs up. Again, coiled off to this left side. Load, explode. And eight, cool. Take a little breather. We're gonna grab that lighter dumbbell. Uh, we'll just take a couple seconds here. We're gonna go for that split squat for this one. So same position. We're gonna load everything off to the right side. So we're really respecting sort of that coil position we did in the stretch at the beginning. So I'm loaded off to the right. I'll take this other hand up and across sort of get this elbow out in front. Nice, easy. Slow down, smooth up. Eight reps. Keeping that weight out over that front leg. Let's go one more. All right, take a second. Take your time to switch to the other side. Keep it smooth. Right leg up. Again, a lot of people, I feel like when they do Bulgarian splits, they get a little out of balance. Committing to this side is really gonna assist with that balance. Foot placement, however far you wanna be from the bench is fine with me. Just note how I'm sort of flicking that back right heel out towards you guys at the camera as I go down. All right, I think that's eight. We'll take a little breather. Again, we're laddering down, so we're going to six now. I wanna take our time with this so we can add a little power to uh, each of these jumps. All right, so load up. Again, we'll try to add a little more pop to it. If you're still trying to coordinate it, take your time. That's it. A little breather. Again, if you notice, you're coming to the center as you sort of come up, you're opening up. Really try to keep that shoulder down on the side we're jumping with. That'll help keep the balance. All right, six out. Place your pulses down. Back to the Bulgarian split. Again, exploring like a nice, just sort of Smooth cadence down nice and slow and just smoothly coming out of the bottom. We'll get a little more of that burn sensation in that leg that we're looking for. Here we go. Back leg up. Again, committing to the shoulder being down over the front leg. On six. Smooth down. Smooth down. Two, three seconds down if you want. One more. All right, switch it up. I'm infamous for being a terrible counter, so enjoy that. Here we go. Let's give me one more. Nice. All right, back to the pulsers. Going for four this time, guys, so we can put a little more uh, oomph into each of these jumps. Here we go. Whew, put it all in there. Other side. Whew, all right. Now we're starting to notice that weakness on the dominant versus non-dominant sides of the body. So again, taking our time, making sure we can uh, rest properly to put as much into it as we can. Here we go. Four reps right, four reps left. Slow down, smooth up. All right, switch it. Four is the number. Four 
Pour it out. Again, take a little longer break. Again, this last one gets to be max effort. Big pop, two reps. Here we go. All right, make sure when you finish that last one, you still do that nice deceleration with the pulse. Other side. Whew. All right, guys, done with the pulser. We're gonna wrap up with those last two Bulgarian split squats. Load that right. Here we go. Nice and slow for this last one. And always smooth out of the bottom. All right, guys, first little bit done. That's really to set the tone today's workout. Let's get to the second set here. Right, guys, into the next work set, we're gonna be getting that clock at back out. We're gonna be doing 45 seconds of work with 15 second breaks in between and or to transition. Uh, we're gonna be on the floor for most of this. So we're gonna be sort of staying low. Make sure you got all your equipment sort of in a small little area around you. Uh, we're gonna be doing some kneeling overhead presses. We're gonna play around with what we call like a dip pulse or dip pop, which kind of looks like a hip hinge with a dip action with the arms, with the pulsers. Uh, while we're kneeling, we'll get some bridge presses in or floor presses, and then we're gonna play around with sort of a pulsing uh, glute bridge press uh, action. The goal behind this is we're gonna get some nice traditional pressing work in with the dumbbells, and then we're gonna really work on some really explosive athletic arm actions that sort of relate uh, to those same pressing actions, just to make sure we're keeping our arms nice and fluid and nice and fast uh, while we're also developing all that nice strength and uh, physique. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my clock going, guys. We're doing that. Um, Got a 10 second countdown here and then we're doing 45 seconds of work with that 15 second transition in between. I'm gonna highly recommend you start a little lighter with this first one, especially because it's overhead. We're gonna be doing a kneeling overhead press. If you can, I really like for you to sit back on your ankles. You can put a pillow under you, whatever you need to do to help assist with that, but you wanna be sort of striving for this position. We're not super rushed here. We're going palms in at the bottom, kind of like a traditional Arnold press. And then we're going straight overhead, palms towards you guys. And just keep that action nice and smooth and consistent. As we go through this full 45 seconds, don't hesitate to set the bells down a little early. That's okay. Especially if you're limited on the amount of weight that you can use at home. It's just about getting in a good effort. And if you have lightweight at home, you're looking for a little extra work, that's our 15 second mark for break, uh, just slow down that cadence, work on that eccentric motion of it. That'll get that tissue nice and pumped up for you. All right, this next action, we're gonna start up tall like this, high kneeling position. We're gonna draw into a hinge, explode up. So this is gonna sort of have a, a dip type action with the arms. It's gonna really light up the triceps. It's gonna allow you to really ooh, put as much effort into that pulse as you want and absorb a little bit of the work into the hip. But right after those presses, whew, you definitely are gonna feel that a little more in the back of the arm. And rather than working on being super, super fast there, we're working on being as aggressive and explosive through the arms as we can be. Uh, we're gonna head sort of to that floor press now. I am gonna be doing a glute bridge variation of this. I like it a little more. We're gonna lay back. Dumbbells, we wanna have them up like that. Maybe pop them up on the knees. We're gonna load them up overhead here. I'm gonna go up into a floor press. You may even wanna sort of push the feet together. I kinda like that. Uh, and then, we're gonna do palms facing away from us uh, throughout the duration of this. I'm trying to chick, uh, stick that sternum through the ceiling, getting that nice arch in the back. So I can really feel that lower uh, lumbar, lower back working here. 
Like I said, we'll just stay lighter and just work on a nice cadence. Perfect, all right? We're out. We're gonna get our pulsers. We're gonna go to a similar uh, action with the body. We're gonna be pulling ourselves into a glute bridge this time. So arms are gonna be crisscrossed. I'm gonna be up on my tippy toes. I'm gonna draw in, push out. So I'm using that pulse to pull me into the glute bridge. And my elbows are gonna sort of create that stop portion for that pulse. Again, you're gonna feel this a lot in the triceps, especially after those presses. But this is gonna help us get that carryover, maintain that nice speed and power in our pressing actions. Couple more seconds. All right, we're out. That's the end of our little block there. We're gonna go back uh, to the kneeling press. Good goal within this 45 seconds would be to try to achieve about eight reps. So keeping the cadence nice and smooth like that. Uh, anything less than that, you're probably going a little too heavy. And this is right where you'll start feeling how that pulsing action ooh, really puts some effort into those triceps. Just pacing this out, guys. Try to get one more good one in. All right, we're out. Again, get to sort of that dip pulse action now. It's gonna have very much a similar action to doing the uh, uh, dips. But we're gonna add in that nice little hip function into it to absorb some of this power. Again, we're up high, load, explode. And this one, you can put a ton of Ooh, like jolt into your pulse for extra work. Or we can keep it a little calmer. It's almost an active recovery between the dumbbell exercises. But just with like those split jumps, pulse in, pulse out. Should hear a nice crisp action every time we come down. All right, enjoy that 15 seconds off. We'll go to those floor presses. Again, we're in that glute bridge. Um, I'm sort of doing that sort of that frog stance where I'm pre keeping the feet together. I like that, I think it helps load my glutes a little better. Uh, your feet can be flat if you prefer. And you can keep your back on the floor if you prefer as well. We're keeping the palms away the whole time on this one. Just trying to load that low back and get that thing nice and strong and stable. Trying to push your neck flat into the floor gives you a lot of surface area to press through. So if you are going a little heavier, that's beneficial there, but we're going for duration. One more good one and we're out. Again, we'll use these pulser ones. We can put a lot of power into it if we want, but we're more looking for fluidity, power, and just sort of keeping a good clean arm action in relationship to those presses. So cross arms at the bottom, pulse in, pulse out. So when the arms are spread or the pulsers are spread, the hips are up, send it out to that cross. And that spread sort of creates space for the hips. It's very similar to what happens during the broad jump. And always have those two different distinct pulse actions. 
Couple more seconds, and we're out. All right, guys, we're going into the third and final round on this. Again, pulsers, back of those uh, arms, those triceps, those pulsers really get that activated for us. We're gonna stick with that lighter weight. And we're just gonna try to be nice and smooth and consistent into this last round. Any of this stuff, if you wanna stand or sit in a chair, that's fine. I just really value this kneeling posture and would like for you guys to develop that. Oh yeah. Just gotta stay smooth. You know, real quick if you went too heavy on this. Let's try to get one more good one. All right, we are out. Grab our pulsers. We got that nice 15 seconds. Again, let's just try to stay nice and consistent with this last round here. We're up high to start. We draw back into the hinge, explode out. Hinge, explode. You can hear those two very distinct moments. And again, we're just after that additional tricep work. And just for a good athletic arm action that relates to those presses. Couple more, one more, and we're out. Nice. All right, guys, back on the back. Again, just pulling off floor presses here. You can play around with the hips and the feet, however you see fit. I do really like sort of that frog position. So putting those feet, bottoms of feet together, bridging, keeping the palms away for now. Really trying to emphasize on getting into that lower back in a good way, that good low back discomfort. Strengthening it. Ten more seconds, guys. Last set of presses, we'll just keep it strong. One more rep, we're out. Ooh, yeah, seriously. Triceps are burning, they're on fire. Again, having this sort of high velocity, this big powerful movement with the pulsers really changes the feeling of the dumbbell workout. Cross the arms to start, lift as we pulse out. Just feel how this really relates to that floor press. We can get a little added volume without having to carry all that load. Last couple. All right, guys. Hey, that was three rounds of that. We got another block we're gonna get through here. I'll see you at it. Let's get into the last little block here. We're gonna work on some more advanced coordinations. We're gonna sort of use this as a little extra volume, but also a time to cool down a little bit uh, and work on, again, some coordination. So we're gonna navigate some more complex moves. We're gonna start out, we're gonna be doing, um, I'll do a little step function here. We're gonna do a 180 sort of split squat and then take that into a speed skater. It sort of ends up making this U shape. Uh, if you got a lot of room, you can try to make these things big if you want, or if you got a little area, you can still do a whole lot of really cool athletic movement. Essentially what's gonna happen is we're gonna start with the pulsers off to the right. I hit and come over a full 180. I hit and step to a skater, step back, 180, step, step. So I get skate, 180, skate, 180. 
And we're just gonna sort of use that 45 seconds to kind of put that uh, coordination together, move that dumbbell out of the way. Uh, once we get through that, we're gonna play around uh, with a step clean and press. We'll be doing that on the right and the left. Uh, and then we're gonna wrap things up. Like I said, sort of at the beginning of this, we're gonna come back to that flutter pulse and we're just gonna use it for some great uh, ab work and core development here to wrap things up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my clock going. We have a 10 second countdown. Uh, first round here, we'll probably do two to three of these. We'll see how we're feeling. Um, we're just gonna really step function this, make sure we're getting good at the pattern before we really ramp it up. So again, we're gonna draw ourselves, do that D cell split squat. Send ourselves out for that 180 to that DCL split. Skater, skater, 180, skater, skater, 180. You can add a little pep to your step as you start feeling a little more coordinated, or you can literally step function it if you need to. But if you're feeling good, I'd say we could get that little bit of added work really take advantage of how these pulsers let us really piece together some really cool coordinations. And not only just piece them together, but we can add a really, a uh, whole lot of precision uh, and some really nice intensity to it. So finish that, we're gonna take a single dumbbell. Uh, we're gonna do a clean step press. So every motion we do in this action, we'll sort of take our time again for the first one. Uh, there's going to be a step for each action with the dumbbell. Hand is down, palm is back, clean and step, step and press. Rack and step, release and step. Clean and step, step and press, rack and step, drop and step. And just nice, easy, fluid, movement. This sort of reciprocating action and weight shifting should make like make this feel sort of like a breath of fresh air after all that pressing we did. And just really get us feeling sort of nice and uh, fluid uh, to wrap this uh, workout out. All right, we take that full 15 seconds. We're gonna switch to that other side. Again, weight is already off to the right leg. I like to start with that thumb back, step and clean, step and press. Rack and step, drop and step. So there's always a stepping action with each motion with the dumbbell. And we'll just keep this nice and easy to start things out. Just sort of notice I'm always keeping this offhand sort of involved in the exercise. I'm either pulling that elbow to the side or I'm throwing that elbow towards you guys at the camera. All right, we'll park that dumbbell. Move into the last little piece here. We're gonna do that flutter pulse again so we can really wrap things up uh, with some nice core work here. It's one of my favorite drills with the pulsers right now. I've done a lot of hollow holding in my fitness career. This is a really great progression to the traditional hollow and flutter kick. You'll note at the beginning, we started with the hands together. I've gone ahead and separated the hands. Now that I'm feeling really coordinated with that pulse, About five more seconds. All right, guys, we're out of that. We're gonna head back to our feet. Again, I think we're just gonna go for this second round here. We're feeling good now, we're feeling coordinated. We can put a little intensity in this uh, and that will have our cool down finished. All right, so we're gonna do that 180 to start. So it's load, 180, load skater. Again, step function if you need to. Add some speed and intensity to it if you want. Now 
Use that pulse as a reaction point and sound to cue you to do the next step. Almost there. And done. Cool. Whew. That one's easy to get carried away on. I'll give you guys a little more of a caddy corner shot of this, just so you can see a different angle. Again, we're going clean and step, press and step, rack and step, drop and step. Doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. And just riding that fluidity of this. It should sort of just have you wanting to do the next action. And out. Take the 15, and we'll wrap up on this other side. Whew, that's a good one today. If I'm feeling it, I know, it's, know you guys are feeling it. Bet we get one more in after this one. Ooh, one more. All right, we're out. Off to these flutters. And we'll wrap this workout out, guys. Whew. These pulsers add a totally different intensity to training. Whew. But look easy on paper, it's much harder in person. Nice and steady. Focus on that pulse. Make sure it's crisp. Put the hands together if you're feeling a little less coordinated or you're getting tired. All right, guys, we are out. Hey, that was another awesome workout here in the lab, guys. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Please leave us a comment on anything you like or dislike about the videos. We want to cater to you guys. We'll see you at the next one.